So in this video, what we're going to look at is the graphical addition of non-collinear vectors, right? We're going to stick to graphing. Um, we're going to go back and redo all of this stuff mathematically as well, but for now, graphically. I just want to show that the process that we have figured out is good no matter A, how many vectors we have, and B, what directions that they act. So the first thing we're going to do is a nice simple problem uh, for non-collinear vectors, um, and that is going to be to look at two vectors that are at right angles to each other. So five meters east, and I'll just use a little uh, slight hand notation there, and B is going to be uh, 10 meters south, okay? So the steps are exactly identical to the ones we've uh, labeled before. If you don't remember what they are, stop the video, think about them. When you come back, here we go. We're going to draw in our compass rows, east, north, west, south. I'm going to get a scale. Seems once again, uh, one centimeter to uh, one meter scale is good. I mean, I'm obviously picking numbers that make this really nice. Um, so we don't want to get too caught up on that. Uh, but right, because like our, our displacements are probably not going to be as neat as these. But just for the sake of process, once again, I want to keep things nice and simple. The next thing we're going to want to do is a start point. So notice here, I'm going to go east and I'm going to go south. So I'm going to start towards the left uh, top of the page. So here we go. I'm going to pick my start point. I'm going to take my protractor. And here's uh, where we're going to see that that guideline that I've been talking about is going to come in real handy. OK. So there we go. Great. So once again, I'll do uh, A in red, or blue, rather B in red, and then my resultant in pencil. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a five centimeter vector to the right. Boom. So there we go. OK. Label it with a vector A. And now I'm going to do from the, from the tip of A, I'm going to draw a vector that is 10 centimeters south. So it's really important now that I get a perpendicular. So let's talk for a minute. How do I ensure that I get a perpendicular? So let's look on the protractor. I'm going to zoom this in for a second. Let me see if I can figure that out. Yo, there we go. So you'll note on the protractor, right in the center, the three inch line, which lines up the five centimeter line, that there's a line there. If I take that line, and I line up this line so it matches the vector that I just drew. So now you can no longer see that black line. It is, you can see it there, it's off a skew, right? There you go. This five centimeter piece and this three inch piece is lined up along the previous vector. That means that this edge, folks, by definition, it's got to be perpendicular to the, the vector that I drew initially, okay? So I will often go in there and throw a guideline in and then come on back and now I'm gonna draw my vector. Uh, it looks like the width of the pen kind of messed me up a little bit there, um, but there you have it, okay? Actually, I'm gonna go back in and redraw that and make that better. I didn't take it into account the width of the pen when I did that which is silly. And it's those sort of imprecisions that lead to um, slight inaccuracies uh, from the mathematical answer that we're going to derive eventually. But the picture means a lot. So there we go. I'm going to label that with a B. All right, so there you go. Very clearly a perpendicular. I'll be looking uh, when I'm forcing you to do vector drawings. I'm going to be looking for those perpendiculars to be true perpendiculars. So you want to be on point with that, right? Once again, I want to draw the resultant. Now, once again, the resultant, remember, goes from the start of the first to the end of the last. That directionality is hugely important, OK? So there we go. I'm going to put an arrowhead on that and label that with an R, OK? So going back to the previous video, 
And I want to revisit the definition of resultant. We said it's the resultant of the addition of two or more vectors. Sure, it is a vector drawn from the start of the first vector to end of the last. But a new way I want you to think about that is let's say that you uh, were going on a walk and I said, go five meters east and 10 meters south to find the treasure, okay? Well, if you're a smart pirate, because let's assume you're following a treasure map, you could do this and this, or you could just take out your math and go like, oh, I don't have to do that. I can just walk this one path to get to the same location. And that's really a, a way I want you to think about the resultant. It's the one vector that can take the place of all the others. Okay, so it's another conceptualization for the concept of resultant. Now, need to report my answer. So what am I going to do? Well, it's a graphical process. So I am going to measure the resultant. Okay. Yeah, so that's 10 centimeters. It's a bit long there. So I just gotta move that along. Looks like it's 11.3 centimeters. So I'm gonna always come across here and write down my measurement and then convert to scale 11.3. Actually, I'll go below here, which is 11.3 meters. That conversion is pretty trivial since I'm doing a one-to-one -one scale, but if you add other scales, there you go. And so there it have my answer. It's 11.3 meters. Hold on a second, what direction? Now you may be saying to yourself, oh, Vaughn, that's clearly Southeast, but it's not. If I were to say to you, go Southeast, what would you do? Hopefully you would go at an angle of 45 degrees in between south and east. I'm gonna tell you, this is not a 45 degree angle. This is not southeast. Now, I will say this vector does go southwards of the east line, but it is not southeast. So how do we report that then? Well, the only way to report that is to do another measurement. We are gonna measure an angle. And the angle we're gonna measure, I'm gonna call theta r, is very specifically the reference angle for the vector. Now, if you don't know what that means, we're gonna take a little side trip over here to talk about what a reference angle is. I'll just draw this down here. If I had, here's my axes. If I had these four vectors, right? A, B, C, and D, the reference angle for these, hopefully you remember from math, it's the angle that each of those vectors makes with the nearest horizontal axis. So that is that angle, that angle, that angle, and that angle. Unless otherwise stated in this class, angles given are reference angles. If I'm going to give you another angle, I will tell you that the angle I'm giving is not a reference angle. You are to assume that the only angles we care about in this class are reference angles, unless you are told otherwise. So here we go. By the way, the R here does not count for reference. That is the angle the resultant vector makes with the reference, which is in this case, the east axis. So I'm gonna measure that with my protractor. Okay, there we go. And that's 64 degrees. So I'm just gonna jot down my measurement. Theta R is 64 degrees. And then I can write a final answer, right? 11.3 meters. And we're gonna use the at symbol, 64 degrees. Now, does that give me all the information? No, it doesn't. Because you don't know what the reference is, right? You just know it's 64 degrees from one of the reference lines. You don't know if it's this one, that one, that one, that one. Well, here we're gonna do. Uh, in math class, you might've learned something called absolute angles. They're garbage, they're trash. Throw them out of your head, don't care about them. We're never gonna use absolute angles in this class. So you can just defenestrate them from your brain. To defenestrate means to throw out of a window, ignore them. Never, ever, 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 ever use absolute angles in this class. There, I said it. So what are we going to do? We're gonna reference a quadrant. So we were saying before, this, if this is north and east, this is not northeast, but we would say that this vector goes north 
of the east line. Okay, but that's really clunky to write. So we're just gonna write north of east. Get it? So this is south of east. This is north of west, and this is south of west. There we go. So this is north of east. I just wrote that out there. Or actually, sorry, ah, this one is south of east. And so there you go. Now I have a final answer. Easy peasy. Okay. So that's how we do the graphical addition for non-collinear vectors when they are perpendicular. So now let's talk about, well, what happens if they are angled vectors? So if my givens are a little bit more complicated. So here we go. Let's say A now is 80 meters, just a little wrinkle there, but this is at 30 degrees north of east. And let's say our second vector B is, oh, I don't know, um, 50 meters at, and we'll go uh, 45 degrees south of east. Woof, a little bit harder of a process here, but not. It's the same process, folks. It's just the vectors are a little bit more complicated looking. That's all. But it's kind of nice to know, irrespective of how hard the vectors are, the process doesn't change. So here, I'm going to use one centimeter is equal to 10 meters as my scale and get going. All right. So looking at this, to know a good starting point, I know this thing is going to go uh, north of east and then south of east. OK, so I want to make sure that I'm towards the left side of the page so I don't run out of room. So I'm going to just go here. I know I'm going north and south. Good. I'm going to uh, put in my guideline. Right. If you notice, that guideline was really important in that last problem. Oh, I forgot to like explicitly mention that because that guideline ended up being what I used to measure my reference angle from. And so drawing that guideline there is your reminder that that's the angle I care about. All right. All right. So here we go. Um, so this one's a little different because I have to start with an angle vector. So there you go. I'm going to go in there and 30 degrees north of east, one, two, 30. There we go. Plop that in. And then I'm going to draw an eight centimeter long vector that goes through there. Make sure it leaves room for the width of the pen. All right. Awesome. So that's vector A. Okay. Now, if I wanted to label this angle, once again, I want to avoid numbers on my diagram. Numbers start to get distracting after a while. I'm going to call that theta A, because that is the reference angle that's associated with A. All right. Let me just focus that a little bit. All right. Now, the next vector I got to draw is from here. Oof, that's a little hard. So what I'm going to do, actually, folks, is I'm going to put in another little guideline here. And if you don't remember, I'm using the side of my page to make sure that the horizontal lines that I'm drawing are indeed horizontal, i.e. they're perpendicular to the vertical side of the page. If you have lines, easier, but the thought that these would end exactly in the lines are problematic. So now, notice here, I have to do a 50 meter vector at 45 degrees south of east. That is not 45 degrees from this vector, that is 45 degrees from this new guideline because it's 45 degrees southward of the east line. So here we go. Let's mark that off. Okay, and we're going to go with almost used inches there for one, two, three, four, five. Okay, perfect. And that is vector B. And if I wanted to, I could label the reference angle theta B as well. And as we said, I can now draw in a resultant. And that resultant goes from the beginning of the first vector all the way to the end of the last. Oof. All right, there you go. And this, folks, that little small angle there, that's my theta R, because that is the angle that my resultant vector is making with the initial start point. And I can figure out what that is by, once again, measuring it. 
And so I'm going to measure both the magnitude. So it looks like 10 and 10 5. So the magnitude of R is 10.5 centimeters. Therefore, that's going to be 105 meters. Theta R, little small, tiny angle there. Okay, looks like it's three degrees, the tiny angle. Great. So putting that all together then, that means vector R is 105 meters at three degrees. And looking at the direction here, north of east is what that is. And I can box it. So that is the graphical addition of vectors. If I had another vector, I would just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going right? So it doesn't matter how many vectors you have. It doesn't matter if some are, are right angle vectors, some are um, angle vectors. Like I could end up with a drawing where it's like, okay, some amount east and then some amount north and some amount now north of west, right? And then maybe a, a south from there. Gross. But then my resultant would just simply go from the beginning of the first to the end of the last. That would be my theta r. This would be like if this is a and b, that's my theta c, c vector d, okay? And I would draw my little guidelines there so that I was uh, able to measure my vectors, right? So the process doesn't change. All that changes is the number of steps along the line with the process. So in the last video of the vector sequence, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about, let's say I don't wanna do this graphically. I wanna do this all mathematically. How can we deal with this directionality mathematically. In order to do that, we have one last skill that we need to put into this video. So let's look at vector A from the previous problem. Vector A was 80 meters at 30 degrees north of east. And I'm just going to draw that vector again. Guideline down, start point, assuming the same compass rows as before. There we go. Okay, and that's vector A. Okay, good. Now, if we're to stop there and say like, okay, vector A, well, when we did the co, the, the sorry, when we did the perpendicular vectors, this resultant looks like, like vector A now. And notice that this vector R could be thought of to be made up of parts, a part that's horizontal and a part that is vertical, okay? Same thing with vector A. Vector A can be thought of as made up of a part that is horizontal and a part that's vertical. Or if you want to think about it another way, if vector A was something there like this, and I had a light source up above, it would cast a shadow onto the ground. Or as you can see with this pen, right? Actually, can you see the shadow? You probably can't because the pen is blocking it. If I have the pen upwards here, it's casting a shadow down onto the page. That shadow down onto the page, we can kind of think of as what we're gonna call the horizontal component of A. And then there's going to be a vertical component of A because we can always take vectors and break them up because any vector can be thought of as the addition of any number of other vectors. We're just gonna choose two other vectors that are convenient. In this case, one that goes along our horizontal axis and one that goes along the vertical. So I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna drop A perpendicular. There we go. And I can see then that if this is theta A, that the part of A that is along the horizontal axis would be like that. And the part of A that goes along the vertical axis would be like that. If I were to add those two vectors together, I would get vector A. So we're gonna give this a name. It's gonna be called A with a subscript of X. And this is an A with a subscript of Y. And so AX, is known as the, and notice it is a vector in its own right, the horizontal component 
of A. And then AY is the vertical component of A. Now, some of you are sitting there thinking, ha, 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 you're using X for horizontal and Y for vertical, and you were making fun of us for doing that before. Well, unfortunately, I didn't get to name these things, right? If I could rename them, I would as AH and AV, but every book does it this way. So we're just gonna stick with the X for horizontal and the Y for vertical in terms of our components, okay? So there we go. From a mathematical standpoint, we can see that A sub X plus A sub Y is always gonna equal vector A, yes? But from a vector standpoint, right? It's like, if not this is three and this is four, that this is seven, I think we would all understand because this necessarily, that A sub X always necessarily is perpendicular to A sub Y, that we're gonna to be to exploit uh, some, some very important tools in order to do the math with this stuff, we're going to be able to exploit the Pythagorean theorem since I have a right triangle by necessity, and I'm going to be able to exploit right triangle trigonometry. So for example, if I wanted to know how much of A was on the horizontal axis, well, I actually did a scale drawing so I could measure it. I'm getting about seven centimeters here. And for A sub Y, which would be uh, about 70 meters, in A sub Y, I'm getting about 42 centimeters or 44.2 centimeters, which is 42 meters. But let's do this mathematically now. If I know the magnitude of A, which I do, which is 80, and I know the reference angle, I can find A sub X by using right triangle trigonometry. So here we go. That's the angle in question. A is on the hypotenuse. AX is on the adjacent side. So hopefully we can see then that the cosine of theta A is going to be equal to the magnitude of uh, A sub X, which is the horizontal component on the adjacent side over the magnitude of the whole vector. Okay. So if we're not comfortable with trig, we can build up like this. When I find the X component of a variable, I'm probably going to just write down it's the magnitude of the uh, the uh, the vector times the cosine of the angle as long as the angle is the uh, uh, reference angle, right? So anytime I'm trying to find the component that's on the adjacent side, I'm going to use in cosine. Anytime I'm trying to find the component on the um, opposite side, I'm going to be using sine. So let's just do that calculation. So it's 80 meters. Notice I'm not doing any of the scale diagram stuff times cosine of 30, right? Let's plunk that into our calculator, my handy dandy TI30X solar, which is my favorite calculator. I've got 80 and then cosine 30. I'm just noticed here, I'm not sure if you can see it. it. It is in degree mode. I always do a quick check to say if it's in degree mode before I start. And I get uh, 69.3, writing down anything more precise than that is silly. And remember, when I did this from a measurement standpoint, I was expecting 70 meters. 70 meters is pretty darn accurate compared to the more precise 69.3 number that I'm getting through calculations. All right. And then for the vertical component, I could start if I feel uncomfortable with the trig function in its normal, you know, uh, SOHCAHTOA sense. But as you get more comfortable with this, you're like, okay, I'm looking for the component that's on the opposite side of the triangle. So that means I'm using sine. So it's the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. And I can plunk that in, 80 meters, sine of 30. And if you reach for your calculator, think of me smacking your hand because we should all know that sine of 30 is half. And that's 40 meters. Now, theoretically, we should all should know that this is rad three over two. But at the same point, we would never leave our answers as 80 meters rad three over two, because that's not how human beings speak to one another. I got it in decimal form rather than exact form, because otherwise we fail in our ability to communicate with people. And when I measure this, I got it slightly larger uh, than 40 uh, meters. I think I got 42 meters. But once again, um, there's imprecision in the drawing because um, there's error involved in any measurement. And, uh, you know, the, the most probable form of this is the width of the bullet point pen, which I really can only manipulate to some degree. So there you go. The concept of components is going to be 
absolutely vital for us as we go through to do our more advanced method for how to do uh, solving for um, uh, the answer to a, to a vector addition graphically. Uh, but for now, that is enough for this video.